Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, rest assured the proposition tonight is designed to fail, and it will, without our doing, because the truth cannot be debated, cannot be argued. It is self-evident. The proposition is built to fail because it is false. It assumes there is a peace process underway and that there are entities, namely Hamas, undermining it. Ladies and gentlemen, a more accurate reading of tonight's proposition would be that Hamas is an obstacle to Israel's monopoly on peace. And peace, according to Robert Fisk, will not give Israel more land, which is its actual undeniable raison d'être. Of course, Hamas is an obstacle to peace in the Israeli worldview, not to peace proper. Because peace for Israel is code for peace and quiet. That is to say, their unchallenged rule over greater Israel. And more and more today, peace is code for RIP, rest and peace for the Palestinians, meaning the slow but steady ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. But if we're talking about a just peace, then let us be fair. A just peace means remembering what things were like before the Israeli occupation of Palestine, even if we can't imagine what peace would look like in the future. Things were peaceful before Israel came onto the scene as an occupying power and proceeded to violate the terms of all of its international obligations as an occupying power. The Arabs and the Jews lived peacefully side by side one another before the forceful Zionist takeover and iron wall policy of land grabbing and violence ensued. If anything, Israel created the conditions for the rise and popularity of Hamas propping it up in the late 80s to weaken the PLO and undermine the first intifada, as leaked cables indicate. It has since, since switched tones and today labels its once ally Hamas a terrorist organization to further undermine the Palestinians' national uh, liberation efforts. Thus, it is unlikely that Hamas would have emerged in the absence of the doings and misdeeds of the occupying authorities. There would also be no Hamas if, if I may finish, please, thank you. Uh, there would also be no Hamas to speak of, no peace obstructed, and no debate to be had were it not for Israel. If they negotiated with Hamas then, surely they can negotiate with them now. But as you, as you can see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, peace with Hamas is not desired. Even if today Hamas is the biggest thorn in Israel's side, as I'm sure it is, a threat to their zero-sum notion of peace, they are, after all, the legitimate representatives of the Palestinian people, freely and fairly elected in elections monitored by international observers, such as the Carter Center. Can I finish? Thank you. Um, and recognition of Palestinian statehood by the UN and also the UK Parliament and more and more members of the international community is reaffirming Palestine's sovereignty and, by extension, its right to protect its sovereignty and borders at all costs. Hamas has a right, whether you agree or not, and whether you classify it as a terrorist organization to strip it of its legitimacy as a political actor, it has an obligation to defend its people against Israeli aggression in order to maintain the peace, a just peace. I'd like to finish, thank you. What we are witnessing today are the side effects of an illegal occupation and ongoing crimes against humanity. The violence exhibited even amongst the Palestinian brothers against brothers is symptomatic of a one-sided Israeli encroachment on Palestinian land, life, and liberty. If actions exhibited by Hamas are deemed terroristic, it is not happening in a vacuum. It's in direct response to the disproportionate pressures which the Palestinian populace has sustained at the hands of Israel and its revisionist Zionist policies of divide, conquer, carry on. Shall I show you the maps over the decades of the ever-shrinking Palestinian territories to help you decide who is the greater obstacle to peace? There's hardly any, anything left of it, so I left it at home. When Israel has undermined all efforts at a Palestinian unity government, again, as leaked documents reveal, and also very public statements by officials unabashedly show, when it has erected a wall, capital W, that the International Court of Justice has deemed illegal, and when it has waged innumerable acts 
of unprovoked and unwarranted aggression against the Palestinians, the majority of them innocent women and children, when it is armed to the teeth with advanced weaponry and bankrolled by the United States of America and the upwards of billions of dollars coming, I'm ashamed to say, from my own tax dollars as an American. Hamas, by contrast, is a paltry little group that started out as a guerrilla organization, troubled with you know, internal corruption, as, as they may be today, but that has won some popular legitimacy and has abandoned its more militant ways for a more conciliatory platform of moderation, but is, but is, still, rejected, is still rejected at the peace tables. There will be no peace for as long as the unilateral Israeli policies persist. And as long as the world turns a blind eye to the plight of the Palestinians and gives Israel carte blanche to do to Arabs as was once done to the Jews. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to finish. I'd like to finish. Ladies and gentlemen, a vote in support of tonight's motion means you are contributing to the very cycle of blame that fuels this manufactured conflict, a cycle that is entirely avoidable, may I add, and that depends on the complicity of this house in order to persist. This is the greatest obstacle to peace, and I, for one, will not stand for it. Please join us not in opposition, but on the third proverbial bench of truth and justice and vote against the proposition not to be anti-Israel or for Hamas, but simply to extricate yourselves peacefully from a debate that is toxic and obsolete and to help pave the way to a just peace for all, which is the only type of peace there can ever be after all. Thank you.